Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a video on signal modulation coming from the JE main test. And let's read it together to make some sense out of it. So they give us two statements. Statement one says a speech signal of 2 kilohertz is used to modulate a carrier signal of a megahertz. The bandwidth requirement for the signal is 4 kilohertz. The statement two says the sideband frequencies are 1.002 megahertz and 0.998 oh this should say kilohertz so let me correct that there we go so either it's 1.002 megahertz or 0.998 megahertz or in other words 1002 kilohertz and 998 kilohertz so those are what we call the sideband frequencies now they're asking us based upon those two statements which of the four following answers are correct so either both statements are false, both statements are true, one statement, statement one is false and statement two is true, or statement one is true and statement two is false. So, what is it? Well, what kind of modulation is this? We have a carrier signal of a megahertz and we superimpose upon that a speed signal of two kilohertz. Now, what that means is that we can go above the carrier signal by 2 kilohertz or we can go below the signal by 2 kilohertz so that's what you have to know and understand it's simply either you know it or you don't so that means that we can go 2 kilohertz above and 2 kilohertz below that gives us a total bandwidth of 4 kilohertz so in other words we have the carrier signal CS of 1000 kilohertz and then we can add 2 kilohertz to that to all the way down to subtract 2 kilohertz from that so that means that we have the bandwidth for, of 4 kilohertz so that would be called the bandwidth and so therefore when they say the bandwidth is 4 kilohertz that is a correct statement and that means that the carrier signal can be modulated all the way up to all the way up to 1002 uh, 1, kilohertz on the upper end and 998 kilohertz on the lower end by adding the 2 kilohertz to this or subtract the 2 kilohertz so it gives you the total bandwidth of 4 kilohertz and the upper and lower uh, limit of the of the signal would then be what we call the sine bat frequencies all the way go up to 1002 kilohertz and 998 kilohertz so it turns out that both are correct statements so that means the answer must be D it's again one of those things either you've seen it or you haven't if you haven't seen it you have to just purely guess can you make sense out of it, hmm. it it's one of those things but if you just haven't seen it before then it's just a pure guess and I don't know if you guess on these questions do you lose can you let's say that you randomly guess on four questions then out of four attempts you'll get one of them right they'll penalize you for being wrong but you get points for being right I don't know I think you come out even Steven it's better is it better to leave everything blank I guess if you leave everything blank and you don't guess you don't get any points but you don't lose any points so it's your choice which way you want to go if you really don't know how to answer this question but if you remember seeing something like before there it is that's what we call the bandwidth and that's called the upper and lower band frequencies and that is how it's done Yes, I think on this test, if you guess wrong, you get points taken away. If you leave it blank, it's zero. You don't lose points or gain points. And if you, obviously, if you get it right, you get, get most of the points. But um, Did you get eliminate any of the guesses? That's the key. If, now, in this case, you probably can't eliminate it. Either you know or you don't. So if this is just a pure guess, then yeah if you can eliminate two out of four then by all means guess on one of the two because then after a while you come out ahead if you can eliminate some of the potential answers of being wrong 